Hamtech M0 FXB. Welcome to my channel. So we have our GPS module, the Haltech version 3 Meshtastic device. And this is the board that, that is needed here to attach our GPS module to the Haltech. So we're going to solder. I've already just put the pins in there. Um, this to the board. And we, we need to solder a couple of pins as well to the Heltec version 3. See those two pins there? It's ground and live. And on here, it's not just ground and live, it's also receive and transmit of the GPS information going back and forth between the boards. And there is configuration for this within the Meshtastic app software. So the idea is to solder the pins on, then I can just use wires and I can disconnect easily. I've got a whole box of these like GPIO pin wires, so we'll configure it and then we'll show you we'll show you it completely connected, how to connect it, and then we'll show you how to select the correct settings in your in your Meshtastic app to enable it to use the GPS. In the background you've got the LilyGo T beam. Now this includes GPS, so we don't need to do that. It also includes a rechargeable battery, so that might be another option you might think about um, buying a unit that's got everything included. The Heltec, they are lower priced, they are a lower price to buy, but you don't get all the included items. But you can get them for £25, that's more like 45 But by the time you bought the module, I suppose, and put the time in, yeah, you're probably better off with the other unit. But this is still fun, and it does come with a screen as well. You know, there is a screen there. So I'm going to solder this up. Everything's getting nice and hot. We've got some flux on the pins, and uh, and then let's move forward. And my trick to soldering is always put some flux on what you're going to solder, and always have a blob of hot solder on your tip, ready to join everything together. Then it just works. Okay, and that's the first sort of twin pin on there that's going to power everything, and it is marked on the board. If you look close, it says ground and three and volt three. Okay, that's our four pins on there now. That's what it looks like. So we should be ready just to start connecting wires. First thing I always do is unplug the soldering iron as soon as I stop soldering. Uh, that's the you know safety thing. Let's try and configure some of these these connections. Okay, we are getting there. We've got four pins soldered here. We've got the two pins for the live and the earth. Also, we've got the receive and so RX TX soldered to pin number 48, 47. Now I did take those four screws out and look, uh, just to pull the screen away a bit because I was worried about the heat from the soldering iron and the solder. Uh, so I had to be quick. I didn't leave the heat on there for very long. And I did decide in that case to solder straight to the the sort of hole, let's call it, because I thought if I put pins in, it's going to poke through, and it's, the screen is right close. The screen sort of cable, so I, that's the way I've done that. So now let's put the wires together and and see what starts happening. Right. Well, I think we've got everything connected now. So look, the GPS antenna clips on here. On the actual board, if you look there to the left, it's marked. We zoom in. Voltage, receive, transmit, and ground. So red is voltage, receive is yellow, and transmit is, or TX is green. And on the end, we've got ground, which is the, the black cable. So your red and your black are going to the board here. The Heltec board, which is, I soldered those two pins on. And the one to remember is that the cable on the outside, you know, near the outside, is your ground. And then the next one, the next pin is your three volt, three volt live. So in theory, we're all connected. So on the back of this board, and it's probably the riskiest part, is on pin 48 and 47, you've soldered... RX TX basically and the green I believe is the TX yellow is RX 
You can always invert them if we have to. So everything's connected. Now I could, if I was sensible, I'd already have a battery for this because you just plug power into there, look. Uh, but I haven't, so for now I'm just gonna attach a USB cable. So you can actually get cases and put all this into a case. I know it looks a mess, but you can shorten the wires, neaten it or add your battery and then put it all into one case. There are cases out there that do that. For me, it just makes sense to just buy one that's got everything, yeah? Uh, but okay, it's fine because a lot of people have got these Heltec version 3s. So let's fire it up and see if it starts smoking. Um, so no smoking yet. Which is good news it's all started working now there's no indications on this board of I can't see LED lights or anything so we literally what we're gonna have to do is go with the next part of the video will be showing you just the how to configure and turn on using this GPS module uh, using the app which I'll show you now and and then I do actually actually have a GPS booster in my shack uh, so I'll put that very near to this device here and see if we start picking up GPS. So this is my GPS booster, they don't cost much. And you connect your GPS antenna to it and it just boosts the signal. And it has its own, you know, USB power supply, you know, to boost the signal. The next bit is once you're connected via your app, tap the three dots and go to radio configuration then go to position, like so, zoom in for you, and then go up, have a look now, no that's the wrong one, we don't want power configuration, we want position, go up, GPS mode not present, uh, let's have a look now, Enable, so we've got to enable G GPS mode. That's good, and then go up and see the way it says redefine GPS pins there, just on the left. You're sort of telling it to use those pins. So just tap it, type in the number, and when you're done, just click send, like so. And it's gonna send it to your module, which is gonna Reboot now. This is my GPS booster. It's very close uh, There is I am starting to see a light flashing here on the actual module which I wasn't seeing before I'd sent that information So Close And we just go back to our normal looking at different messages now we're inside the house and we're only on this antenna. I have bought, purchased an external antenna, but I haven't got one yet. It should be much better once we do though. Just looking at the map. That's our log. Yeah, it pairs automatically. You just swipe down, turn on your Bluetooth and it will automatically put a number on the screen and you just type the number in your paired. So now we're just waiting to see if we get a GPS you know, a GPS lock now. Not sure if we will, but that's the complete process. Well, I think we've had success very quickly as well, look. Go through. Keep going. And there's my location. I haven't told it my location. There's no manual location in there, so it's finding location. Excellent. So yeah, I know it looks messy when it's not in a case, but once it's in a case and all the wires are neatened out, it definitely worked. Flashing away, there's my little G GPS. So chuffed about that because it wasn't a two minute, you know, it wasn't a two minute job. I really recommend getting a booster. All you do, you just get your normal GPS antenna that's outside the house. They're only about six pound. And the SMA just connects to this booster, which is then fed with five volts. And that just amplifies it. And it means that, you know, radios like this, you know, I've got my Alens HD2 just come through the post, actually. 
uh, just put it there for a while, they get a GPS lock, you know, inside the shack instead of me having to be to go outside. So thanks so much for watching my YouTube channels. Uh, Meshtastic is great fun. You know, it's hard to say. You know, a lot of people say, which device do you recommend? But I don't really know. All I know is what I've got. Because there are some super looking ones out there, aren't there? With Blackberry phone styles. and I've got the the tracker. Okay, built-in GPS. Small and neat, I've added a battery to it. You can see dangling there. Batteries are inexpensive, I need to buy another one. This is the Lily Go T-Beam. It's got everything you need and a giant battery. You're never gonna hardly ever need to charge it. So this is the kind of one I'd put in the loft with the external antenna going and leave it there for a few hours and not worry about the power. I mean, any, any battery bank we tend to have them for our mobile phones, is gonna power one of these for hours and hours. And that's the point. It's not just the fact that it's off grid, which is fantastic, but it's, and it's got built-in Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and you can use a serial connection to control it, you know, basically a USB cable, but it's so low power consumption, you know, the battery, so you can take it with you. And 100 billion percent, don't just leave them at home, take them out and about, leave one at home. Look at our location there. Um, so we try and send a hello, so pretty sure it's long fast. So H A, oh, because I can't even type. Yal, we're gonna send Yal. Okay, and look, Yal has gone through, and then we can send it the other way. Got a funky little hotspot here. These are really smart, R Finder hotspots. Self-contained, built-in batteries, the same as the battery we've got here. Um, uh, and it lasts for hours, and a, a full hotspot DMRD Star Fusion. They're called R Finder, and they're on um, AliExpress. But this one was actually a, uh, not an R Finder model. It would came O Star, and I had to convert it. But thanks for watching my YouTube channel. Bye for now. M Zero FXB Hamtech. Just a quick one here on my R. Well, it's not actually the R Finder model. This is an IJV one that's been converted. Inside, it's got one of these batteries. Look. Okay, well, two, two of them, 18, is it 1850, 1860, the model. And then it's got a power, there goes my phone, better answer that, it's Don from Kenwood. And it runs this hotspot, bye for now, 7-3.